Alrighty fam, welcome back to another video. So I think I've done a few tips and tricks before, but I don't think I've ever gone through and kind of clarified what I look for when I do my account reviews. So long story short, I was about to do another account review today. And uh, yeah, I realized I kind of might be worth doing a, a video on what I recommend to do for your account. Now, you don't have to listen to me. You can think I'm wrong. I'm by no means the best at this game. This is my box. I'm on my way to nine mil box CC. Uh, I've been playing for about a year and a half, pretty much entirely free to play. I think I've spent about $100, maybe $200 in total, and all that's got me is LR. Uh, oh, sorry, not LR, just got me Lost Vein Meliodas so I can LR him. So I'd like to think I've got a pretty decent free to play account, and I haven't been playing for that long. Um, again, that being said, you're welcome to disagree. This is just my thoughts, my YouTube, my videos. So hopefully, you guys pull some tips and tricks from this um, and you find it somewhat beneficial. Um, but I'm kind of just going to run through a few things in terms of, like I said, what I look for when I do account reviews, what I try and do in my own account, and why I do it. Um, and hopefully it gives you some gives you some help along the way. Um, I might forget a few things. I'm doing most of this off the top of my head, so I do apologize, but I'm kind of working my way through. And uh, let's get stuck in. So I suppose the very first thing will kind of start with the festival stuff. Now, this is probably pretty much a no-brainer, but just do the festival stuff, guys, or the, the special collab stuff or whatever it is right do your special missions do all the bingo events if it's up you know do the death matches finish the exchange shop like this is basically just free resources ready to go that's going to help you with your account now some of the stuff is super grindy this isn't too bad but like this if you haven't done this this is going to help your account so much there's like 30 sa coins in here anvils sr pendants a whole bunch of different stuff like this is pretty straightforward, but just make sure you're max maximizing, not this so much, but, uh, or Hawk's treasure chest. Like, it seems silly, but like, these things really do add up over time as you're going through. And the more resource, especially if you're free to play, the more resources you can get your hands on, the better, right? So that's, we're just gonna start there. Next things next is just, just do your dailies as well. Like, I'm kind of doing this video based on the fact that, look, maybe you play every day, maybe you don't. Uh, maybe you just want to make your account better. Maybe you need to organize your account, whatever it is, right? But I'm going to be going through what I do on my account and why. Um, I did this even before I had a YouTube. So, you know, to do it takes like maybe half an hour to an hour a day. Look, sometimes you can't spare that. I get it. But like I'm going on the basis of the fact that you guys want to make your accounts better. That's why you're watching this video. So clear all your dailies. Again, some of these are going to seem really straightforward and dumb. But especially as a free to play, the most amount of resources you can get, this gives you like four or five diamonds, depending on like what it is. Well, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I got six diamonds yesterday from my dailies. Silly things like that are just really gonna make a whole bunch of difference and check in as well when you're doing a your knighthood. Now I'm gonna go to knighthood and show you guys what I do as well. Now this is my knighthood, it's pretty underwhelming at the moment, uh, we do have one on global, we do have one on Asia, if you guys want to join please feel free, but we don't get that many check-ins on our knighthood at the moment, especially in the Asia, in the Asia region. So we get, you know, 10 people checking in, if you get up to 20 people checking in, you get a diamond, right, which is always very beneficial for you and all your colleagues that are in your colleagues, all the people that are in your knighthood as well, right. Now pretty much every day when I can spare it, I'll also come here and contribute some of my mats, as well so i've already done my daily contribution but you can pick any of the demon mats you have contribute 100 and it'll get you 100 store points or shop points for your knighthood this is then allows me to buy all this stuff right still the cough it won't go away um so i usually buy sa coins uh ssr pendants depends which one i'm i'm you know need more as you can see i've kind of been hoarding them a little bit just for what i've decided what i want to decide to do next i always buy max stamina pots um just because I find that super beneficial. Again, it depends on what you need more, stamina pots, SSR pendants, SA coins, or demon mats. I generally find it's quite easy to get more demon mats. Uh, I usually try and make sure I keep a few hundred at a time, but again, depends on how well you can do demons, um, uh, all the deathmatch demons, right? But I always do that. Then from there, you wanna work your way through the account so that that's kind of a few of the daily things that you want to do make sure you check into your knighthood make sure you do all your daily tasks make sure you do all the stuff you can do on here especially when there's only daily reminders here so you're going to do three per day on this current one right so make sure you're doing that every single day um those are kind of at the very beginning those are like the super basics right 
then from there, especially if you're uh, like, you want to make sure you come to your Fort Sogris and you clear out all of your time limit dungeon keys and all of your attribute dungeon keys as well. I always make sure I leave a couple of these for my dailies, but you want to make sure these are clear as well. Now, you can get additional ones. I think it's hiding in your misc part of your uh, inventory. We'll get to the inventory later. Um, but they can always hide out here. Make sure you've collected and, and opened them and they'll filter into here. Just clearing this again, like uh, the main thing you guys will realize is there's a bit of organization, a bit of planning to this, but the main thing is about playing the game and using resources. It's really straightforward. It's not that complicated. Just play the game, get the resources that you get from just playing the game and then make sure you invest it wisely into your characters, which, which we'll get to. So Fort Solgris, make sure you're clear, right? Make sure you're doing all your patrols every single day. Make sure you're working through and completing them all as well every single day, right? Boss battles, I did a video yesterday on how on all my current teams I use for my boss battles. We'll get into teams for other stuff a little bit later as well, but make sure you clear out these every single day. Again, work through the mats that you need, whether it be Belmoth and Original Demon or whether it be the three basic demons, make sure you're doing that. Make sure you clear your knighthood every week. Again, resources, resources, right? Making sure you're doing Demonic Beast battle. I'm up to Nidhogga, so I'm crafting the, the stuff for Nidhogga. Make sure you're working through these. Like, all this stuff is pretty straightforward. Make sure you don't have any training grotto keys. So many people can't be bothered with training grotto. I get it. Get to the point where you can auto-clear them and it becomes a lot easier. This is super important. Like, all this stuff is just about maximizing the resources. Do your memory tree of, you know, do your world tree tower, right? Make sure you're doing all your labyrinth. Make sure you've finished the shop. Let's get rid of this. Make sure you've finished your shop. You've sold out on everything. The last one to get is these boxes. I could have done them, but I couldn't really be bothered. These ones don't have the best drop rates for stuff. Make sure you're getting all the main stuff, right? Like, it's... Anyway, you guys get what I mean in terms of that, right? Like, make sure you use your resources. Make sure you're doing everything you can. The amount of people that ask for account reviews, and I'm more than happy to do them. I love doing account reviews, but you guys always ask for them, and then I see just a mass amount of unused resources, you know, sitting in here. You haven't sold your gold. You haven't used all your keys. Whatever it is, there's just it's just free GP, free box CC, free everything for your account. So, let rule number one, use your, use your stuff. Use your word that I can't say because I'm on YouTube, right? Make sure you use it. Um, that's the first step, right? Next step, again, is going to be, I mean, this is the main one, right? This is kind of based around your units. Level up your units. It's, it's kind of as simple as that. However, there's a little bit of tactic to it, right? So depending on where you are in the game, you might agree or disagree with me. Um, there's a whole bunch to kind of unpack with your units. The first thing is picking the units to level up, right? Now, the units you want to level up um, will kind of be based a little bit around whether you're doing PvP, Brawl, Deathmatch, or Normal Adventures. I'll cover a few things. I've covered Deathmatch already, so again, if you haven't watched just literally the previous video on my channel, it's just behind this one. Uh, it covers all my Deathmatch um, teams that I use. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll cover PvP, Brawl, and then just your general like adventure stuff very shortly. Well, now. Um, so the big units that I recommend investing into, I, I did a video ages ago on the top units that you want to have. They haven't changed too much. Um, I'll call out a few big ones that you potentially want. The one ultimate will carry you through most of the game. Absolutely crazy. Um, he's a great just general mission. He's okay in PvP. Very, very good unit to have. Uh, Red Tarmiel is one of the best links in the game um, as a grace and is actually a pretty decent unit on his own. Uh, you've got things like Trader Melee, although a slightly older Festival Melee, he still will do a, he still does absolutely crazy in PvE. So definitely, definitely worth investing there. Freya, oh sorry, Freya is very, very strong too. Very good PvE unit and does okay in PvP. Um, you have Purgatory Melee, Estorosa, the whole demon squad still does really, really well in PvP. Um, but like the Gothers are great for rank ups, right? There's a few units that you specifically want to um, make sure you invest in first. And those are the ones that are going to carry you through most of the content. Like I said, is the one ultimate the best unit in PvP? Definitely not. However, is he probably the one of the best units you want to invest in first? 100%. So much damage, so helpful for going through all the demonic beasts, the main storyline, right? He can still semi-hold his own in PvP. So that's kind of your starting point. Get your set of group of core characters that you really want to invest in. And start working on them. Then start working on their gear, right? Attack crit, 
uh, you have HP defense. I mean, hopefully you guys know how to gear. If you don't, again, I think I'll, I can make another video, but I have a video a wee while back before I had the nice mic and the nice face cam and everything that explained gear and how it all works. Um, so make sure you're gearing your units correctly. Attack crit, whether you want to give them HP defense as well. Right, but basically make sure your units are invested into, even if you start to do cosmetics, right? And also you want to make sure their alt levels are invested into as well. We'll touch on a few other things in terms of alt levels later. Um, but that's your starting point. Get a core group of really good units. Making sure you're summoning on festival banners is key, especially if you're free to play. Fest, don't don't necessarily, like, if you're running low on gems, don't waste your money on collabs. Collabs are a lot of fun and really good. Um, but make sure you're spending it on festivals. Festivals are by far the best banners. They give you all the best units in the game. That's where you want to save your stuff for, right? That's your starting point. Then from there, once you've done that, you can kind of start to expand, right? And you can start to look at a few other things like say PVP and say Brawl. So let's say you're building a PVP team. This is my current PVP team. This is my unknown team, right? Um, pretty much same thing as I was mucking around with Shell tier. Um, but this is where you can start kind of breaking it down almost by race in terms of how it works. You can build an unknown team, right? You can use t tiers clutch for this, tier, hell, albedo, Echidna, Rimuru, like any of the unknowns are very strong. Anashi's a super strong backline with his holy relic. Uh, goddesses have fallen off a bit, but still useful. Like, you can start with a team, like, you don't necessarily have to get to, what is it, champ one with 60 diamonds every single week. Like, if you're just starting out and you're just trying to build a good account, getting to champ, getting 50 diamonds is not that difficult on global, on JP, on Asia, wherever you are. You just need a good solid team that's invested in, right? So with goddesses, you'd build it around maybe Mael, right you'd have margaret maybe sari or maybe red like um like maybe green ludo in the back was swapping out uh margaret for you know light liz whatever it is you can then move on to don't do fairies fairies are garbage you can do lr Escanor. you can do that with roxy you can do that with you know barn you can do that like it depends on the units you've got right so the best ones are definitely at the moment demons unknowns and humans those are definitely the top teams at the moment. Demons is probably the easiest, especially if you just have Estorosa. Estorosa Perg Melee with Demon King is always is still strong. Fallen off a bit again, but still strong, right? So like pick pick a set of team, pick your favorites if you want to, and then you can start building on them as they go. It depends on your play style as well, right? I love tier this combo just because tier is very much just like you one shot someone or you don't. And that's kind of how tier works. I love that play style. Build that around that or build it around your favorite stuff from the anime. It really doesn't matter, right? Just basically have a set team that's your go-to and then you can start working on the other stuff as you go. Now with Brawl, um, again, you could use one of them would be your PVP team, for example, right? I then have uh, an alt rush team just with a couple of really strong alts. So again, the one ultimate because he's invested in, Trader Melee because he's invested in, a couple of decent alts for alt rush and then I have a demon team. So maybe you've built out two PvP teams, you can do that. Or if you really want to be toxic, you can do two alt rush teams with Suicide Fraudron and, and, and uh, Suicide Liz, right? It just depends on where you're at in the game. You might be 10 mil box CC, you might be 4 mil, you might be 3 mil, right? That's kind of then once you're at PvP, you can do that. And same thing goes for the Demonic Beasts, right? Like you want to start building out teams for Demonic Beasts. So where can, where can we go? So let's say, let's say this is, oh, I don't really want to do, there we go, let's use this one. Let's, so the first thing you need to do is you need to start with your unit that is part of that demonic beast, right? So whether that is, uh, you know, Jormungand for the deer, whether that's Megelda for the bird, whether that's, you know, wherever she is, Thonar for the dogs, um, where is she? There she is. Right, thrown out for the dogs. That's where you start, and then you build out around that. Now, a lot of these will double up, right? So, for example, you can use the one ultimate. You can use Trader Melee. Now, there's these different combinations. You can use Green Brunhild. Forgot to call her out earlier. Green Brunhild's a great PvE unit to invest in as well. I even like Green Arthur. He's a great PvE unit. So, once you have kind of these main set of characters that you've invested in, you can start building it out into the Demonic Beast teams. And then maybe you'll get to a point where you realize, you know what, I actually really need Blue Jericho. You don't really need it for anything, but let's say you do. That's then who you can start looking at investing in next, right? So once you have a basis of PvT team, Brawl team, most people probably skip Brawl, but I like it because again, Brawl has resources, right? So let's let's go to Brawl. 
just so I can show you guys what I mean. But like, that's kind of where you start. You go, okay, I've got my set group of units that I've invested in that are good for everything. And they're really, really strong. And then you can start diversifying a little bit as you go. Oh, in the middle of rank calculations, you can't see. Oh wait, now I can go to the shop. Hold up. This is what I wanna show you guys. So you've got shops, right? Where you can purchase a whole bunch of different resources. Again, you wanna work your way through all of these as much as you can because it's free resources. So that's kind of where you start. Right, you make sure you're doing everything you can every single day, whether it's maximizing all your resources and using all those resources, and you're investing them in units that are going to carry you. Festival Deanne, the one ultimate, you know, Green Brunhild, uh, Demon King if you've got them, you know, Blue Margaret, all of these, you know, Roxy, whatever it is. These units are going to help you, and then once you've done that, again, you can start spreading. Now, as you start to spread, uh, your resources will obviously run a little bit more thin. So you need to be a little bit more specific about who you invest into. So again, I'd always recommend starting with units that are going to be maximized in terms of cosmetics, in terms of ultimates, um, and then build out from there. Once you have started building out from there, you can start investing in other units that maybe work really well as links. Once you've got your base units of brawls, you've got your PVPs, you've got your demonic beasts, you've got all those kind of sorted, then you can start looking at things like maybe links, right? So for example, I've invested heavily, well not heavily, but I've invested in this king. He's fully 6'6", he's got level 100 fully maxed. I've given him HP defense gear just because he pairs, his link is this barn. And brawler, and this brawler barn I, or I've used very, very regularly in the back because he's a really good sub-slot unit for increasing my damage. So I've started to do that so that when I pair them together, so when I do this, for example, his pairment will give him a really strong CC, right? Or a stronger CC. So that's where you can almost start to go to next. Now, in terms of the best links, you pretty much always want to start with the goddesses. Uh, so let's go to four archangels. So you pretty much always want to start with red Tamiel and red Sariel and Mael. These three are going to like this grace does 20% extra damage. This grace ignores, what is it? When you crit, you ignore additional crit defense, something along those lines. What is it actually? No, this one. There you go. If critical strike occurs, you ignore 50% of the enemy's crit defense. That's really good. Then you have Red Tarmiel as well, who's just the most broken grace in the game, right? You have Blue Tarmiel, which is helpful on a couple of things, but kind of got superseded by Red Tarmiel. So these are really good starting points for your investments in terms of your gear and your resources, right? Once you've kind of got your main team sorted out and set. So let's say you've done all that, right? You've gone through and you've gone, you know what? I've Max out all the units I really want to use. I've got them for all my different scenarios, my death matches, my PVPs, my brawls. I've started investing in units or I've got all my units that I want in terms of links. I've got all my, you know, goddesses. I've got a few like things like King or I've got Merlin invested into for Eskinor, all these different things. Then where do you go from there? Um, in terms of like leveling up and, and investing in resources, a really good place to start is actually all the R units that are in the game right because they take a lot less to level up in terms of resources uh, and they'll get a nice jump in terms of combat class as well as adding to your box cc so i do recommend starting there i always like to save a little bit for new characters and stuff like that are coming up so maybe don't invest all your resources but starting looking at, at some of these will obviously take a lot less so for example i could level them up to 100 now and that will help his overall cc that is another really really good place to start once you've done that, and then obviously you can move on to the SI units as well once you've done that. So as you can see, get rid of these. As you can see, I haven't done all of them myself, right? So you basically just come across here, go starting grade. All my R units are fully awakened, but they're only level 80s and such. Or for example, my SI units, he's not fully awakened yet, and I haven't level 100 of them. But he takes easier resources than the SI units, right? In terms of SSR pendants, and he takes less... Um, less... SA coins to awaken as well. So that's another really good easy way of getting your box CC up. Now, once you've got your box CC up, well, hold on, I'll get to constellations in a second. Once you've kind of started doing that and you've worked on your investment in terms of leveling as well as super awakening, the other thing you really want to maybe potentially have a look at is gearing, right, your, your, your units. Now we did touch on it a little bit earlier in terms of gearing your main units. So let's say, like we talk about Escanor, you want to give him attack crit gear. I've also got a set of HP defense. One set of UR gear is enough for the moment. You can look at investing them into, you know, perfect roles, things like that. Again, I've got a video on how to go through gearing. If I'm going through gearing, I'll be here forever. That's where you start. Then once you've given them the gear that you want them to have, 
right? So I want Gotha to have HP defense. I want Deanne to have HP defense. And I actually want her to have attack crit, but I've got another set of gear. I've already got attack crit on my other Brunhild. That is kind of a good example of then as you start doing that and as you invest in the right gear, you can start slowly working your way around down the whole units and just start giving everyone that you don't, that doesn't already have the right gear, HP defense gear, right? HP defense gear will give them the best boost in terms of their overall combat class, which will give you the best boost in terms of CC for the account. Now, ideally, I want to get to a point where all units that aren't engraved have, where is she gone? It was that good example that I had. Have semi-decently rolled for HP defense plus five plus five, right? Because that's going to give her the most amount of CC. As you can see, her CC actually helps out CC some of these units, right? Because of the alt levels and like how much cosmic, how many cosmetics and stuff I have, right? Invested in and, and things like that. So that's going to give you then a really high CC because you're going to have everyone with Kia, which will then allow you know you to increase the overall box CC, etc., etc. I'm stuck record now, but you guys get what I mean. I even have it on my Suicide Liz and my Suicide Fraudron down the bottom, who ideally you don't really want to when they go into battle because you want them to die as quickly as possible. But by doing this, like I also then build it out based on, let's say, I have a barn that I want to have attack crit. Or an Esterosa, I want to have Esterosa that has attack crit gear as well as HP defense gear. So I will give them that gear, even if it's further down, right? And it's not as invested into. But what it does is it allows me to line up, okay, I want this person to have this gear, this person to have this gear, and then work the way down from there, right? And then everything that I don't need a specific gear set for is HP defense to give me maximum CC. Same thing with ultimate moves. Now, this might be a bit controversial, but I invest every single uh ultimate move coin into the units unless they're already maxed so you can see here i literally only have one that's left in its max level and then i use those to super awaken my units right every single um ultimate coin i get i invest into their ultimates uh, it gives them an increase of i think it's 500 uh, cc uh, and it just improves their ultimate Right, so I do that now. You don't necessarily have to do that. If you get a couple of units that you don't want to use and you think it's worth buying a new unit for, you can. However, I'd obviously, you know, recommend an ease of caution. I wouldn't necessarily recommend investing, say, the one ultimate dupes into, you know, New Wings King, right? Or I wouldn't send Freya dupes off to buy, you know, Green Monspeed. Right, like it's just it's not a smart investment, so make sure you're being careful when you do that. That's why I only use the maximum level ones to buy the coin shops. So once I had all max level stuff, I would go in and I would buy all the different coin shop ones that I could, uh, just to increase my CC and like my overall box and the amount of characters I've got. Uh, so if you've if you're like this and you've finished all of these and you don't have any more to get, I would just use them for investing in SA as SA coins as three SA coins. And just be careful about that. But yeah, I always invest all my alt levels, but just be careful when you do that. Cool. So, so far we've covered. Make sure you do everything on the day-to-day -day basis. Make sure you are investing in the right heroes first and then branching out from there. Making sure you're investing in ultimates as well as equipments for your entire box. Let's say you've done all that. You're doing really well. You still want to make sure you're investing your GP as well. Now, you'll as you level up, you get uh, an increase in account combat class. Uh, sorry you get an increase in buffs due to your account combat class right so at eight and a half mil i get an increase of four percent defense and 13 percent hp uh, at nine mil that, that goes up on uh, hp as you can see and then obviously some big whales and stuff are up here and they have a massive increase of attack and defense and hp and it's it's all very very nice right uh so there you go at 500 c at 500 uh k you'll start to see a few things that increase right by also investing in the constellations it also increases your stats as well. So you can just auto if you choose to, um, or you can invest in the big main, in the big main ones. They're probably the best place to start, and they'll you'll, they'll take a certain amount of GP as well. So cover constellations again. We haven't touched on the items yet in your inventory, but this kind of folds into what we we're talking about before in terms of just using your resources. You'll see maybe a few more resources floating around here than I usually would have. 59 SSR pendants, uh, wherever my SA coins have gone, and they're a bit further up. Um, I don't usually hold on to that many. I'm usually making sure I invest there. I'm actually making sure I'm investing into them, into units, but I'm kind of at a point where 
I'm not 100% sure who to invest in next, if I'm entirely honest. There's a few people that I could, but I'm also conscious that I want being free to play. I want to save a few so that I can max out the next person that comes along so I can give you guys showcases. Uh, if you're not too fussed about that, then like I said, make your way through the list. Make sure you're doing your top units first, then your PvP units or your Demonic Beast units. Um, I would usually recommend going Demonic Beasts first. Uh, just because getting their relics is going to be really helpful to one boosting CC and two just making certain units so much better. Um, like I said, you can get away with pretty basic stuff in PvP up until like 50 gems and champ, and then once you start going higher, you get you know it becomes a little bit more difficult. But like getting a good demonic beast team, this is where I started before I started investing in my PvP teams, because getting all these additional things like King's Holy Relic makes them so much more usable. Uh, Nanashi's Relic is just one of the best relics in the game, hands down, it's insane. Uh, Chandler's Relic is super good for counter Chandler, right, like that's just on Skull and Hardy. If you come here, Freya's Relic on Nidhogger is insanely broken, Roxy's is insanely strong as well. You know, even on Deer, you have really strong ones, like Tamil's is actually pretty good, so is Sariel's, right. Uh, this one for... The, the Liz is actually really, really strong too. So there's a, there's a few that are kind of like, not must-haves, Arthur's is good. Both Arth both of the Arthur's is good. Um, you know, who else is good in this one? Uh, obviously, Brunhild's is really strong. You know, Festival Gotha. So investing in uh, Holy Relic units first is probably what I recommend. Again, if you like PvP, you do PvP fam. That's on you, that's up to you. It's, it's your game, you play it how you choose. That's just how I recommend doing it because that's what I found to be the most successful before I got stuck into PvP. Um, and yeah, reverse stages. Like basically, I suppose if you could almost distill it down to three main points, I suppose it would be do what you need to do in the game, play the game, get the resources, then invest those resources and then organize those resources. So by organize, I mean like, you know, invest in the units that you want to invest in uh, that are, that'll be beneficial for the account make sure you put gear on everyone make sure you're leveling up people's costumes and that'll put you in a good spot like if you can get to kind of like the end of the day or the week or whatever and be like you know what I've completed everything I need to complete in this all my units are organized by XYZ and I have all the units that I need based on this and look everyone is at different points in the game right you might be past this point where you're going you know what Dan I'm better than you and I know what I'm doing I'm investing in whatever I want to because I really want to muck around with green mon speed and look that's that's cool or you might be a lot further uh, earlier on in the game which is also fine which might mean you know you haven't necessarily invested in some of the you know Roller Barn because you've spent all of your resources on Purgatory Melee because he's been carrying you through the game. As long as you're following kind of like those basic principles that I've been speaking about, I think it'll put you in a good stead in terms of the game itself. When you get all this of the big festivals and stuff, make sure you're farming gold, making sure you're the, making sure you're making the most of um, all your silver coins and gold coins in terms of summoning. So you're investing in stamina pots and you you know collecting your auto clear tickets and stuff. That's just going to make your life a little bit easy. Um, but yeah, I don't want this video to go too much longer. It's 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 tipping over on half an hour there, but I hope that makes sense, guys. I hope that was somewhat helpful. We did jump around a little bit, but um, I think I covered just some high-level kind of basics or some fundamentals in terms of making your account uh, more beneficial, more more better was what I was going to say. It's not very good English, but hopefully you guys get what I mean. Again, hope it was helpful. Uh, any questions, let me down in the comments. If you think I've said something wrong or you disagree, let me know down in the comments. If you feel like I've missed anything please also let me know um anyway i'll stop rambling thanks so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one cheers